to show off in 20 mile road. LAB let me in the side though. Meanwhile, hit the scheme to the intersection, meet my G. Everything kind of started in, in this really wild fluid motion. It started with the why. Um, we saw the city of Grand Rapids using art downtown as a way to bring people downtown. Uh, during an opportunity that should have been a way for black and brown people to mourn, in a way for the city um, to somewhat save face. So we started thinking to ourselves, what would a liberated black and brown art project look like? One of the first components of the project was our Writing to Write Wrongs program, which is in partnership with the Fair Housing Center of West Michigan. So I worked to collaborate with the Fair Housing Center and with local teachers and schools, specifically Ottawa Hills High School, where we were in three classrooms. Uh, and then in that class is where we had the mural artists that were going to be painting the murals come into the classroom and do listening sessions with the students. We had the surveys going on before the, everything started to get the voices and, the, and opinions of the people who live in the community. And um, my job was to recruit uh, 120 people to attend the listening sessions so we can get you know the opinions and everything. And uh, also just spread the word out to everybody, uh, hanging flyers and posters and stuff like that, basically just getting the word around to people in the community. So canvassing basically is um, going out and knocking on our neighbors' doors promoting the project. My initial reactions after the listening sessions um, really opened my eyes to a lot of things, especially with the redlining and all of that, just bringing that uh, information back up. As things that we totally forgot about, listening to the students and how they feel and what things that they want to see, um, which was a lot of smiling faces, uh, black and brown faces, um, families uniting. Some of the um, listening sessions that we had were also in Spanish. So to be able to gather that firsthand knowledge from the individuals that are a part of the community in their home language, to be able to express it in a way that you can. We got a lot of great feedback uh, from the Latinx community members on what their perceptions were and what they wanted from the project itself. My process with creating the mural, we did a lot of like community outreach. So we did Zoom sessions, just asking the people who live here, what do they want to see? Um, and then we collected that information and picked the um, winners of the group. And so we really delved into historical figures, positive affirmations, bright colors. Uh, as a part of the 49507 project, I was able to pilot a curriculum that I created, which is mindfulness and metaphor. And I was able to engage young people right in the neighborhood of 49507, teaching them uh, about poetry, self-expression, and using that as a tool to advocate for self, advocate for community, to be able to say, I want, I need, I deserve, I desire, uh, with poetry being at the center, but the overall goal or, uh, is to get the students close to, enough to themselves to say, this is what I'd like to see for me and for my community. My role within the 49507 project was um, with the diatribe. I got to share the story um, on Instagram and with Carnevale, um, just helping to coordinate the digital aspect of the project. We're making placards that will be posted at all of the mural sites with QR codes that someone can scan on their phone and it will take them to the part of the website that's telling them exactly about the like how the area that they are standing in right now was redlined along with they'll be able to engage with those videos on the website of the artists and the business owners right there um, so I think the website really helps to create that bridge between um, that digital content through the physical murals. So the digital component um, I think is really important to um, sort of set up the narrative behind why the 49507 project exists and the space that it needs to exist and the reasoning that it needs to exist. Um, it's really about, from my understanding and my viewpoint, the 49507 project about reclaiming space um, in our neighborhood, right? And, and I think giving the history behind redlining and how specific neighborhoods were invested in or not invested in, and you are looking at them now, I think it's really important to ask yourself, okay, if I'm standing in a zone that was um, red, right? Red, actually redlined, labeled as hazardous, 
how is this investment different? Um, how was it different in the 1930s when it was legal to not invest in an area? And what does it look like today? And how can we um, really take an active role in shaping what it looks like in the future, um, even though that these laws were incredibly racist and terrible? Now that we have this, we know this information, it's out there, people have the opportunity to learn about it. What can we do differently in the future to continue to um, make our neighborhoods ours? One of the things when looking at the maps it shows you that this isn't an accident, right? Poverty, lack of achievement, lack of access, lack of opportunity is systematic and, and designed, um, unfortunately, sewn into the social fabric of our, our communities. When people are given the opportunity to dream or envision what their future can look like and have the tools, right? Mm -hmm. Don't just mm -hmm. throw them out there, but give them the tools that they need to um, survive and to, to thrive. So far what I've seen uh, is people believing that things like this are possible. I think that has been the biggest thing, seeing that one, any dream or idea can become a reality, and two, that uh, we are the, the ones that make the neighborhood and we are the ones that, that have control of that narrative and we do have the possibility and the power to change that. Every single person uh, fed into this and made it what it was and what it could be. I want to thank all the neighbors for getting excited about it. I want to thank the, the artists for doing an incredible job. I want to thank the team uh, for really making everything what it is. Uh, and I am excited for everybody to go out and experience it, to scan the QR codes and the placards, to learn what this project is really about uh, by diving in, by more than just going around and seeing the art. Um, and I can't wait to hear what everybody thinks about it. And I can't wait to see what the future holds. Get my hands in the air, but they don't care. Cause in their heart, they just look fit.